Are you out of the game? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would say that it's there's that there, I've done a lot of interviews in the last couple of weeks, and there's been different um, theories that have arisen. I, initially, I thought it was a tongue-in-cheek uh, uh, saying, you know, uh, meaning that uh, you know, here's the most accessible pop playable radio friendly album I've ever made you can have it and I'm leaving and then I'm leaving you know <laughs> um, so uh, so enjoy my absence um, uh, as a kind of joke but then um, but then the other thing I thought it could have been was that you know this is the uh, you know the culmination of being in the game for so many years mm. you know for, from pretty much most of my life and and, and this is sort of the full package here of, of that whole process I'm kind of like out of the gate or uh, um, right oh so there was just a the misspelling closet. it was misspelt um no no it was out of the game <laughs> you know it, it this comes out of the game um but that but actually the other day I was doing an interview and uh and I realized that what it could also mean and, and this is perhaps a, a bit of both is that you know I'm not this isn't a game for me <laughs> mm. you know I'm 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 it's about the music it's about the songs and and you know this whole That's even, what I got. I thought it was know, about artifice. Yeah, that, that I mean, you, I mean I'm going to still play a lot of these games, you know, I I still uh you know want to do entertainment tonight and 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 have a vi have a fun video with Helen Helen Bonham Carter great video. and I having sex in the library it's great. And um and and all of these silly things, but it's not it's I, it's not about the game. It's actually about the music, and um, and that's sort of what I feel in pop is, is 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 missing. I think you need all of that fun, silly stuff, but 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 the music has really kind of fallen by the wayside. All right, let me come back to that, but just very briefly, the, when the video premiered a couple of weeks ago, it uh, it caused quite a fuss. It's a yes. great one. Um, Helena Bottom Carter. How did you get her involved? Well, she's been a friend of mine for years. So you just called her. I just called her, yeah, so and asked my video. her, yeah, and she she was really excited. She was actually a, a bit of a stalker <laughs> of mine uh, a few years back. <laughs> I was doing a bunch of shows in London, and she would come to every single one. I was doing a run of shows, and at, at the Old Vic, actually, wow. and uh, and she was this. I was like, who's that crazy woman in the corner with like, all that <laughs> hair? Um, uh, and then, but then, you know, I we ended up making friends. Right. Before having her arrested, <laughs> <laughs> you have called this. You just alluded to it off the top here again. You've called this the most pop album I've ever made. It certainly sounds that way. Yeah. Was that by design? Yeah, I mean, I think it was from. It was by design, but also through a very kind of natural process. Um, meaning that you know, before this album, I'd written an opera and, and done that uh, that songs for Lulu tour, which was very solitary and, and intense. And my mother had passed away, and and I had given birth to a, a child, so I was sort of um, infused with with a, a lot of adult kind of situations, right. and um, and I needed to just blow off some steam and have fun, and and I had this kind of newfound uh, appreciation of for pop as as just a kind of tool of pleasure, <laughs> and, uh, and and meaning and, you've I, never felt that way about mm, it. I mean, I I've, I've I've had glimpses of it, but I don't think I quite got got it for pretty, huh. pretty much my entire career. That it was, you know, it's not it's not a it's 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 not supposed to be too serious, you know. Even uh, when you're writing April Fools and stuff like that in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I think I think I was always trying to, you know, I infuse, you know, my my my. My plebeian message was some kind of you know intellectual time bomb, which I think was good to do at that time, and there's something interesting in that. But with this album, um, I, I just it was just about you know the songs and about about the experience. It's also about a, 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 spe a specific kind of uh, pop, this '70s yeah. sort of sound. Uh, producer Mark Ronson has yeah. described. This I mean, record. I think it is that. I don't think it's. It, it, it's delegated to that, but uh, no, I mean that it exists. Relegated to, yeah. but 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 he relegated, says sorry. he calls it a a real '70s Laurel Canyon spirit, yeah. and it does feel loose and welcoming. Was that was that something you had in mind as an approach, or did it emerge in the record in the recording of? The no, record? that that's something that Mark very much uh, wanted to capture. I mean, he he lived with the material for a good year actually before we went into the studio, and uh, wow, and uh, just. Within his, you know, imagination, uh, conjured up this Laurel Canyon, uh, you know, what, what is it, the Troubadour, <laughs> um, 
uh, on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard yeah, idea, yeah. idea, you know, and um, and I, you know, in in conjunction, grew my hair, <laughs> and uh, and we kind of went for it with that with that in mind. But it, if it brings to mind. Um, Fleetwood Mac, yeah. Elton John, Steely Dan. You were just a little kid in the 70s. Yeah, so. well, I mean, that that's the other thing. I mean, is that, funnily enough, I mean, though, I mean, I adore Amy, ha- Amy Winehouse's work, and I think she was a, she was a legend. She is a legend now, for sure. Uh, but, uh, but um, you know, there was, she was not from the 50s or the 60s in the least. I mean, it was, it was, uh, uh, you know, that, that that is a whole other generation. Sure. But with this album, I mean, Mark and I were both born in the 70s. And, and arguably, you know, that music was the first music we ever heard, mm-hmm. especially myself. I mean, I mean, my, my dad was in that scene mm-hmm. um, and my mother as well. So they were on Warner Brothers records. So those, <laughs> so those, so I'm kind of, I think, touching on something that I have some knowledge of in, a, in an innate way. And it's way. not entirely dissimilar from you. I mean, I mean no. even a song like Going to a Town yeah, from a few yeah. years ago, that, yeah, that sounded, had a 70s sound yeah, to or, it too. Or, or Release the Stars right. as well. So right, I've, right. I've, pl- I've toyed with it before, but he really, want, Mark wanted to kind of really frame it in, uh, in that sensibility. And I think a lot of it also had to do with just the way it was recorded. It was all on, done on tape. It was all done mostly live takes. I mean, not a lot of editing involved in the in the in the process and 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 also all, all of us playing at the same time which is very much from that era right and you you, you talk about the fact that you're coming out of this uh, difficult or or trans transformational period yes. for Rufus Wainwright yeah from your mother to your baby to, to yeah. but also you know you've written some darker material around your yes. um, uh, personal uh, experiences and any personal life does so given that this mm. is lighter material although yeah. not perfunctory just no. just lighter you know uh, uh, was it easier to write then? Well, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's still a song about my mom, which is quite sad. Candles at the end, yeah. and and even certain pieces like sometimes you need, or even song of you in a sense. Um, you know, skim that uh, traditional <laughs> morosity <laughs> that I'm famous for. Um, but yes, I mean, I think I was definitely. I don't know. Maybe it's just after experiencing death. Uh, so closely and, and and diving into it artistically as well with my last album yes. I you know I'd had my fill and and it was a and I was ready to to focus on on more positive aspects it was and, and yeah and it, I guess it was easier to write in this well sense. my question I mean some some people say it's harder to, it's easier to yeah. write it's easier to write uh, yeah. uh, cathartic uh, pathos kind of stuff you know yeah. and, and that yeah. the, the fun stuff is actually harder to write yeah yeah I mean I just wait what and see what comes right. I mean I'm not um I, I I really just consider myself a vessel and and uh, whatever arrives arrives so I don't I've always had that 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 luck so. And the song, the closing song, you talk about candles, yeah. the one you wrote immediately following your mother's death. Yeah. Uh, you've said that song is an emotional train wreck. Yeah. Or it was an emotional train wreck. Yeah, would, uh, does it take you right back there when you perform it now, or do you have some emotional um, dis- distance? I'm, I think I'm okay. I mean, we have, you know, I, I would say... I you know I don't know it, it, all of that thing with with my mom still can pop up in the oddest places. It can be either on stage singing a song or ordering you know a California roll <laughs> at a sushi restaurant, and you have this sort of memory pop in there. Mm-hmm. So it's all at this point. I think I'm much more. It's they're more. It's more like um, what is it? Uh, Landmines <laughs> that you might step on. Step on. So so that's sort of where it is. So so I can't say it's some yeah. So it's it's not it's not guaranteed uh, with this song either. But when I first recorded it, it was I knew that I could only re- I only recorded this song once. Yeah. I did one vocal for the song, and that's yeah. the one that that we have. And and I couldn't sort of do ten takes or anything. In terms of working with Mark Ronson, you you've been friends with him for quite some time, yeah. but it, but apparently it was actually a mutual friend who suggested you work together. Yes. And then Mark Ronson says that initially he wasn't sure why you were interested in him as a producer. <laughs> why do you well, think it very, wasn't obvious to he's him? Very, he's very humble and charming and full of it. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, you know uh, he, he's probably one of the top you know at least five guys around do you think right he now. thought he was too pop for you no no i think 
No, I, th- I think I think he got it. I mean, I think he's being p- very polite okay. in saying that. Um, and uh, he's well brought up. Um, but <laughs> but unlike myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, but he. Uh, I don't know. He. What what was for sure is that. Um, you know, I I, re- I reached out to him, and uh, and then he immediately was replied, and and was was as enthusiastic, and and so we just kept going, and and that's not always the case with superstar mm-hmm. producers. I've had to chase a few of them down pretty intensely. Well, you've also described, you publicly described this collaboration as a romance. Yes, it was very much a romance. In what sense? Well, I mean, he's quite the nice. <laughs> Bow, <laughs> bow tied boy there in the corner, and uh, and uh, and I I don't know he, he's he's just he was just married uh, when we started the, the recording uh, good for, thank God for him um, in dealing with me and and I I've been with my boyfriend Yorn now for seven years and we're getting we're Your getting, fiance my fiance yeah. and we're getting married in August and there was just this thing that happened where due to the you know the, this time in our lives when we're you know both settled and uh, both in, in emotionally and career wise um we just acted like little kids again mm. and um and developed these kind of high school crushes on each other and uh we kind of like stare into each other's eyes while we were recording and it was very I mean, it was very innocent and and quite beautiful and i think also um helpful in terms of imbuing the music with a kind of languid uh, sensibility and um, and in fact you know the last day of mixing um, I, uh, I I woke up with a bright and sunny smile and ready to go in there and have another lovely day at the office and at one point noticed that uh, this was going to be the final our final day together and I broke down into tears and, and wept I wept and wept and wept mm. and it was also just because I mean it was because of him but also just because I had had this sort of vacation from all I'd been going through with my mother's right. death, so, so it was, yeah. probably also a sense of completion of this record. Yeah, that really yeah, felt good about. yeah, yeah. Well, I was. It's a, it was a gift, really, this album because I had sort of pronounced, you know, I'm going to make a pop record and it's going to be radio friendly and it's going to be fun, and then lo and behold, it happened. So I was very. Overjoyed. Speaking of things you pronounce, yeah, um, <laughs> you made I mean headlines around the world <laughs> for this these recent comments about <laughs> Lady Gaga. Uh, and to be fair, you say you admire her tenacity, her ambition, and yeah, vision. This yeah. you, what you actually said resonated for a lot of people. You, yeah. But you say her latest album lacks good songs, yeah. and that you find her a bit disingenuous. Yeah. What yeah. What did you mean by disingenuous? Well, I just what I mean by disingenuous is by I mean I'm a gay man, and I see her often kind of um, appropriating these gay issues, which is great on, on, on and, and I and I think it's it's good to have support and so forth. But but sometimes the message, at least at her, that, that I've seen in her shows, um, uh, or, or that that one show that I saw the Madison Square Garden concert, mm-hmm. you know, she basically says, you know, I'm 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 a crazy freak and so are you but don't worry one day you can be like me <laughs> and it's it's just I don't know I find it a little bit of a plank <laughs> that you're walking some of these people down um, and um, and I, you know it, it's this kind of thing where I, I guess I, I, I think about Madonna a little bit who where her attitude was like you'll never be like me <laughs> don't even try it um, I am a goddess and 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 she was just being honest you, know? you don't think Lady Gaga actually believes everybody could be like um, Lady Gaga well nobody can be like Lady Gaga right. there's only right. you know there's a, why would anybody want to <laughs> but um no but she's fantastic I mean I really do appreciate her. I think she's a great singer I yeah. think she's a great pianist. Yeah. And I think she has an incredible. But I'm with you on the, the songs are not. But there's no songs there. That that is perhaps my biggest grievance is that there's you know I listened to that other song today. I don't even know if it's new. Maybe it's old Judas or something. Yeah. Is that new or old? Is it, nothing's that old. She hasn't been around okay. that long. But but, but that's, that's from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's a couple of years yeah. ago. Well, maybe there's something on the new record. I don't know. For me, it's more of just a kind of challenge. I, you know, and, and this is something that artists have done for each other since the beginning of, of art and where they, you, you know, you outwardly, you know, poke a little and, and, and then, you know, the, the, the game is on. We'll see. And um, But we're so not <laughs> used to people doing that, yeah. that it becomes yeah. news. I mean, I, you're, you're being on. Now, have you heard back from her? 
I haven't yet, no, no and I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't necessarily expect to. I mean, you know, I my my whatever. I look at my hits, whatever. I get like a couple of million, maybe if I'm lucky. Um, she's got like a hundred million hits, you yeah. know. So I don't know. I don't know if there's even if any of this is even you know ruffled one of her many feathers. <laughs> but still, I'm I just like talking about music, you know, and 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 I'm in the 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 the, the song corner. So do you think something's um, lost? I mean, back to uh, out of the game, and and w when you talk about the focus on music, do you think do you, do you think we're in a particular period where there's less focus on music? I mean, yeah. and if so. Wouldn't Adele or the Black Keys suggest that yeah. we? No, I no, I, I don't. I think there are different strains at the moment, and I think you, it's it's important you bring up Adele, and and for me especially, um, uh, Arcade Fire, who are, uh, I don't know, they they are concentrating on the quality of the recordings. You know, mm -hmm. that's it, um, and, um, and and the sonic worth. And uh, both lyrically and melodically, you know, it's, they're 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 in that zone, and and that's the zone that I prefer, and that I think, you know, in 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 the, in the olden days was really requ a requirement, you know, if you, you know, um, even you know Doris Day or whatever, you know, had to sing a pretty good song, you know, hmm. and um, and and so it's I don't know, it's just it's it's the side that I'm on, I guess. Hmm. You're you're going to be returning to Toronto's Luminato Festival yep. this June for a solo show, and also you're performing in this. We talked about this last time when you're. I think you're going to do it in New York. Uh, an all-star tribute to your mom, uh, called uh, "Love Over and Over," the songs of Kate McGarrigal. Yes. Uh, so you're going to be on joined on stage by your aunt Anna and your sister Martha and Emmy Lou Harris and Mary Margaret O'Hara and Robert Robert Charlebois. So you've done these in New York and London now. Yes. Um, what does it mean to you to, oh, to do to share your I mean, for one thing, for one thing, speaking of this Lady Gaga question, the first thing I would do is give her <laughs> some of my mom's songs and 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 say, you know, especially the last the last release of 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 of, of their two albums and then also the the demos, um, uh, tell my sister uh, on from None Such, and I would give that to Lady Gaga and I would say, look, listen to these songs, you know. Listen to what this woman is. This is from a woman's perspective. This is because uh, I actually personally believe that my mother it was the greatest songwriter of the lot of us, including Mr. Cohen, um, and in a sense, um, or as good as anybody. Mm -hmm. And so, so, uh, so I, um, I, so, so these. This means a great deal to me. This material, and and um, and interestingly enough, you know, my mother made a made a conscious decision not to, you know, really push her career. After she had children, I mean, she but she still continued to write and make albums, and there therefore there's this real purity and 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 brilliance to this material. It's very it's so uh, unspoiled in so many ways and so important to get out there. Perfect segue when you talk about having children, because yes. even if your <laughs> life has been colored by loss in the, in the last couple of years, it's also been uh, colored by a, a new a new arrival, Viva. Yes. How has how is fatherhood suiting you? Rufus Wainwright. Uh, how is fatherhood suiting me? You know, it's very early to tell. It's it, it, Viva's only about a, a year and uh, and a couple of months, few months. And um, w w what I'm really looking forward to is that you know, in my life, I've been so dedicated and so kind of driven and 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 strategic. You know, I'm I'll write an opera at this stage. I'll do a musical here. I'll you know, and I'm looking forward. For a little bit of, of chance and surprise and derailment, mm. <laughs> that that I think having a child entails. You Has know? it changed things already? Um, well, not, right, she's a little young right now. She she lives with her mother uh, at the moment because I'm going to go out on tour and and, and so forth. Um, and but I'll have I have my time set aside that we're going to be spending together. But I think very soon, you know, once she starts speaking and and and, and her desires are. Are, are made are come forth. Um, there's going to be a lot of changes in my life, and I'm really looking forward to it because I'm, I've been pretty self-centered for a while now. <laughs> well, you're you're also set to marry your partner, yes. Yorn, yes. Yorn Weisbrot, artistic director of yes. the Luminato Festival. Yes. You know, it's such an interesting trajectory. You and your life, the the Rufus Wainwright we would have known in yeah. the late '90s. Yeah. 
the wild coming, coming and live, coming and living in Toronto was was a bit of a left, oh. uh, <laughs> whatever a left a a left turn, ball. Another, yeah, another, <laughs> but so which is where you live now, yeah. or, uh, uh, and although you're not always here because you're yeah. of course traveling so much, yeah. but did you always see yourself? If we fast, if we go, if we rewind twelve years, or did you always see yourself settling down and having a family? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't think I did. Um, I, uh, I didn't know how to live for a long time. I mean, really up until I was 30, 30 years old, I was a complete mess. Um, a, a kind of wonderful bohemian, you know, uh, kind of Art Nouveau mess. <laughs> um, uh, that was fun to hang out with and, 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 you know, it was exciting, but, um, but 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 nonetheless, you know, I, I I didn't know how to do laundry. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to clean. I didn't know how to wash myself. I mean, I was really all over the place. So so I'm only starting to learn all of that stuff. And Jorn is being you know the good German that he is um, is uh, got me you know with an apron and everything. So <laughs> <laughs> the good German means that he, he he's the man. Is that what? well? No, well, oh, what? you know whatever. No, he's just very he's just very. Um, Insistent on on the uh, the chores being done. But, well, good, good. Somebody's putting you in line. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, you're gonna play another song for us. Yes. One more before we go. What are you gonna play for us? I'm gonna play a song called Montauk. I do. I, I live in Toronto, but I also live in Montauk, which yes. is at the tip of Long Island. It's my kind of spiritual home at this point. Um, that in Montreal, I have to put in a word for poor old right. Montreal where I'm from. Um, and New York and Berlin. Yeah, New York and Berlin. But uh, yeah, they're fine. We've given up on them. But uh, no, I've, uh, so, so. Um, but this is, this song's this not song's, unrelated to your daughter too. Yeah, right? No, it's, it's about, it's a bit, it's a conversation with my daughter. Hmm. So here we go. It's good. It's great talking to you. Thank you.